Hello. Today I'm going to have a go at the AQA Use of Maths Algebraic and Graphical Techniques Question 1 from the June 11 paper. Now this is from the legacy paper, but the techniques are the same as the ones you're going to be using when you're doing the pilot algebra paper. The first question starts off with quadratics. Question 1, a mathematical model for the arch is produced. The equation is y equals 133x divided by 24,806 times 315 minus x, where the x coordinate of a point on the arch is the horizontal distance in meters from the left support, and the y coordinate is the vertical distance in meters above the ground at this point. Using this model, complete the table of values opposite. So I've put the table of values here. You can see that the x's values are going up 0, 50, 100, 150. So they're going up by the same amount each time. That means that we can use the table function on our calculator. So I'm going to put my graphical calculator up for you to see. So here's my graphical calculator. To get to the table function, pretty much all calculators have a table function. This is how you get to it on the graphical calculators that we use at King Edwards College. So we're going to go to 7, we're going to go to our table function, and you can see that there's an equation already there, but it's not the right one, so we're going to get rid of that. So I'm just going to do delete, yes, I would like to get rid of that whole equation, and now we're going to enter in the equation which we're given. So you can see we've got 133x divided by 24,806 times, and then we're going to do our 315 minus x. Let's just check that if we've entered that correctly. That's looking good. And that now I can press EXE, and I'm going to have to adjust the range. So for the range, we're going to have a look at the table, and we can see that my x numbers are starting at 0 and going up by 50 each time. So our start value, we want to be 0. And the last value is 315, but that doesn't match our going up by 50 each time. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go up to 300, and I'm going to go up 50 each time. And now I can press F6, or, or I can press EXE, and that will get me to my table of values. What's useful is to just check because we're given the first couple. So I've got 0, and I've got 0. I've got 71, and I've got 71.041. So the first couple of values match, so we know that we're looking along the right lines. So let's put in the rest of them. So we get 132.69. Well, because we're giving our answers to three significant figures, and all the rest of the answers have been given, as whole numbers, I'm going to do the same, so I'm going to leave it as 133. But to get the rest of the answers, we're going to have to scroll down. So I'm just going to use the down arrow. We've got 133, now we've got 123, and then we've got 87 and 24. But we still need to do our last 315. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press exit to go back on my calculator. And then I'm going to change the range, and instead of starting at 0, I'm going to start at 315. That will give me just one value, which is the one I want, and you can see that this gives us 0. So I'm going to put that in. So I've completed my table of values. Part B, it says, on the grid opposite, complete the graph of, and then we've got the equation we had before. So let's have a look at what this looks like. Here we've got the axes. And you can see I've already put the points in. I've used autograph just to make sure I get them spot on. The key thing is to have a look at your scale. You can see on our x-axis, the big squares are going up in 50s, which means every small square is worth 5. On the y-axis, every big square is 20, which means every small square is 2. So using that information, we can plot our points. The mark scheme will let you be within half a square, which isn't very much at all. So you need to be really precise when you're doing this. The other thing to take care of is when you connect up all the points with a nice smooth curve, the top of the graph isn't necessarily the highest number in your table. 
So we've got 133 as being our highest number, but we'll find out later on that's not the highest point on the graph, and it's actually a little bit to the side of that. The mark scheme also asks for you to do it in one smooth line without any double edges or thick lines. So do it with a pencil and try and be as fluid as you can. This is what it should look like when you've drawn it correctly. Part C asks us to use our graph to find the values of x when y is 100 and the gradient of the graph when x equals 60. I've underlined values. It's plural, so we know that we should be expecting more than one answer. So let's have a look at our graph. So when y is 100, what's our x values? Because it says use our graph, we must show on our graph how we're doing it. So I'm going to go up to 100, which is nicely labelled for us, and I'm going to draw a line, and then I'm going to draw the vertical line down. Obviously, you're going to use a pencil and ruler to do this. And then we can have a look at working out what our x values are. So we know that our x axis is going up in fives. So we've got 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. It's about at 80. And then to find the other one, let's count backwards from 250. So we've got 250, 245. It's about 240. Now, to be extra sure, what I would do is I'd check this on the graphical calculator. So if we put our graphical calculator on, and then if we go to graph mode, because we entered the equation into table mode, it's still there on our graph mode. So I just need to draw it. This can take a little while. And you can see this doesn't look very much like our graph. So we're going to have to change the axes. For that, my recommendation is to use the window. And whatever our axes are on the graph, that's what we're going to set them to. So I know that my x goes between 0 and 315. Let's go up to 320. And my y goes between 0. And it's got to be a little bit more than 133. So let's go up to 150. And when I draw that now, it's going to look far more like the quadratic which we had before. And now what I want to do is I want to calculate an x value. So I'm going to go to G solve to graphically solve this, press across, and I'm going to calculate an x value. So I'm going to do x calc when y is 100, what's my x value? And you'll be able to see there's a little square which runs along your calculator and it will stop when it gets to the right value. We get 79.04. And if I press on again, again, it's got to think a little bit. And you can see, again, the arrow is running along the screen and it's going to stop at 100. And that's 235.35. So it's a good job I've checked this on the calculator. I've clearly miscalculated here. 250, 245, 240. Again, it might be the accuracy of our graph. What I would do is I would put down the answers that your graphical calculator's given you. So let's change this to 235 and put that in to here. So find the x values. Well, we know that the first one we said was 79 and the second one was 235. For the next part, we're asked to find the gradient of the graph when x is equal to 60. So this two marks. The first mark is for drawing a tangent at 60. What that means is you find your x-coordinate being 60. Well, again, we've got 55, 60. I'm going to go up to the graph, and I'm going to put my ruler and try and get it to go at the same angle as the graph is at that point. Uh, I've put the line in already. And then what we're going to look for is a couple of points on my graph, which I can read off. So I'm going to go for here, which is 25. And we said this was going up in two, so this is going to be 44. So 25, 44 is the coordinates of that point. Now I'm looking for another point. Or well, as we know this point already, let's use that one. So this is going to be 60, 
and clearly it's going through the y-axis at 80. Now gradient is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So for that we're going to do the second y value, take away the first y value, so I'm going to do 80 to minus 44. I'm going to divide that by my change in x, which is 60 minus 25. It's really important you keep your coordinates the same way around, otherwise your gradient will come out being the wrong sign. And that's a very easy mistake to make. When I do this on my calculator, 80 minus 44, make sure that that bit goes into brackets, and then divided by 60 minus 25, when you put this into your calculator, make sure you either do the top and the bottom, which is how I'm going to do it, and then work it out, or put brackets around the top and the bottom because your calculator will do the divide first and it's really important that you do the subtraction before you do the divide. When I do the division, I get 1.0285. And as with all our use mass papers, we should give our answers to three significant figures. So I'm going to say my gradient is 1.03. So let's put that into here, 1.03. For part D, we're told that the centre of the arch is 140 metres above the football pitch. And we're asked how far below ground level is the football pitch. So for that, we're going to have to go back to the pre-release to understand what's going on here. This is the pre-release. And we're told that the roof of Wembley Stadium is supported by an arch that has a span of 315 metres. The arch has a maximum vertical height of 133 metres above the ground. So what's going on here is we've got our arch, we've got our ground level, but then the football pitch is going to be below the ground level. But the information we're given in the original question, let's go back and have a look, is that the y coordinate is the vertical distance in meters above the ground. So if we find the maximum height of our graph, that will tell us how far it is above the ground. And then we just need to find the difference between that and the 140 meters to find the depth below the ground of the football pitch. So to find the maximum height of our graph, again, I'm going to turn to my graphical calculator. So let's put that up on the screen so you can see it. And we're going to go back to graph mode. And I'm going to draw my graph. You've probably already got this from before. And we just want to find the coordinates for maximum. So I'm going to do G solve. And then I'm looking for the maximum point. It will only do any of the G solve functions if the bit it's looking for is on the screen. So you can see we've got our maximum on the screen. The arrow goes along and we get the maximum as being, the x coordinate is 157, but it's the y coordinate we're interested in. It's the 133 that we're after. So to calculate this, we're going to have to do the 140, take away the 133. So looking at my stadium, we're saying this bit is 133, and then this extra bit is going to give me my seven meters. Part E says we've got the equation and this asks us to rearrange it into form y equals a minus 0 0.00536 brackets b minus x squared. So hopefully you recognize this has been completed square form. So we're going to start with the original equation y equals 133x over 24,806 315 minus x. Now I can't complete the square on it in this form. I've got to expand it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the 133x times the 315. When I do that, I'm going to get 1.6889x squared. When I do that, I'm going to get 1.6889x minus 133 over 24806x squared. Now I need to factorize it because we know how to complete the square if we've only got x squared. We struggle with the coefficient in front. So let's factorize out the fraction and the minus sign. So this takes a little bit of practice. 
I'm saying, what do I have to times this fraction by to get x squared? Well, that's just going to be x squared. What do I have to times this fraction by to get minus 1.6889x? Well, I'm going to have to do my 1.6889 divided by 133 divided by 24,806. And that gives me 350. So we're going to end up with x squared minus 315x inside my brackets. With practice, you'll spot that it should be 315 and you can save yourself a step. If you do do it the way that I've done it on the board, make sure that you keep the exact number 1.6889 and then the rest of the decimal places because we want to get the exact 315 into our bracket. I know that next I need to half the number in front of it, my x. So I'm going to get 133. This all stays on the outside. And then inside I'm going to do my round brackets x and now I'm going to half my 315. So when I do that, I get 157.5 and the sign stays the same. So because it was a minus here, it stays a minus. And then I take away the number I just got squared, which gives me 24806. I've run out of space, 0.25. And that is all within my square brackets. Then I need to expand out my brackets. So I'm going to get my fraction minus 133 over my 24,806. Oh, we should have put in the squared there. I'm going to get x minus 157.5 squared. And now I need to do the number at the end, which again, I've kept exact on my calculator times the fraction. So I'm going to get that times minus 133 divided by 24,806 and our minus and our minus give us a plus so we get plus 133.001 and I've expanded my bracket so that last step we were doing a fraction times my round bracket and my fraction times the bit at the end now I just need to check that I put it in the form that it asks for it well this number here, the 0.00536, etc. If I work out what this fraction is, I will find that 133 divided by 24,806 is my 0.00536, which again is what we are asked for. But we're asked for a positive number at the start. So they've put it in the form of the 133 at the start. So let's put it in the same form. We put the 133 at the start, and then we're going to take away, or let's put it in the form, 536, and then my brackets, the last thing to check is inside the brackets, and inside the brackets, you can see that the x term is last. And inside our brackets, the x term is first. So we need to sort that out. And we sort that out just by swapping the number and the x around. We keep the minus where it is, and we just swap the x and the 157.5 around. 157.5 minus x squared and it's in the form that it wants. So A is 133 and B is 157.5. Let's just state and make it easy for the examiner. A is 133 and B is 157.5. And how they're related to the question, we've got to give it in the context of the question. So A is the maximum height of the arch above the ground and B is the X coordinate where the maximum height is. And that's us finished the question.